Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Nonprofit Enthusiast Live. I'm your host, Lashina Williams, and so excited to be here with you all as we conclude the summer. Um, so this month, we're talking about um, National Nonprofit Day for um, nonprofits. We'll be talking about that throughout the month. We're talking about fundraising, fundraising, and all of those wonderful topics to help you um, grow your nonprofit organization. So today we have very special guest Robert Jones back on with us, and we're going to dabble a little into the fundraising, fundraising area. So let me welcome back up Robert. Hi, Robert. How you doing? Good. We're so glad. You know, it's always good to have you on, um, especially because I know we're always going to be talking about money, money, money. One of our favorite right. topics. <laughs> That's right. Yep. OK, so for our guests who it's the first time getting to know you, can you talk a little bit about yourself and how you entered the nonprofit arena? Oh, OK. Awesome. So uh, I'm from Chicago, uh, born and raised, uh, still here, actually. And uh, I got started within a nonprofit space after graduating college, working for a big four firm, um, and then uh, doing a tax rotation, uh, going through various tax groups in the firm. Um, and then once I landed in the tax exempt organization space, I fell in love with it. And so uh, I was there for about eight years, uh, left there and worked, led, um, worked for a family here in Chicago, a large um, philanthropy family here in Chicago, uh, where I kind of led their tax um, entities, uh, tax ex exempt entities. Uh, and then I left there and went to a bank. Um, I was at the bank for about five years in a charity group. Um, mm -hmm. And then decided to start my own firm. And so that's what I've been doing the last five years uh, from that perspective. Uh, so a lot has been going on, uh, mm -hmm. but, but some good things. Uh, so what we do at, at our firm, RP and Associates, mm -hmm. we basically uh, do your monthly accounting. Uh, and we also keep you compliant uh, with, you know, state and federal uh, agencies by doing your tax returns. The 990 and any other t state related entities that comes to state related uh, you know, things that come with that. Um, so that's what we do on a daily basis. Uh, we have clients that are all over, like you, Lashina, in Florida. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep. And we, you know, handle things, not just your basic bookkeeping, but even when it comes to uh, some government grants, we, we handle the accounting side of, the, of that as well. So it's, it's kind of all. Overall perspective, we basically handle kind of like everything from A to Z when it comes to I love spiritual it. entities. I love it. I love it. And I love um, that you all specialize in nonprofit accounting because so often I'll run into organizations that's looking for accountant and they may work with a for profit one, but that not necessarily know all the different intricacies yeah. that's associated with a nonprofit organization. Um, so I love that that's you all's focus is working with nonprofit organizations over at RP. Mm -hmm. So that's um, love it, love it, love it. So if you all are looking for accounting services i'll do the shameless plug for robert um <laughs> definitely check out <laughs> definitely check out uh robert and his team to help you all and i always talk about this every time you're on the live just for our organization it was absolutely transformational um once we we got um accounting support to be able to help us um grow our mission so um if you're still doing it because that was that was me before then we were <laughs> running our own books and i know nothing about accounting <laughs> um um, definitely consider um, meeting up with this team. And I would also recommend if you're at the place of um, we might not be ready yet, it might be even worth just kind of having that conversation to look like what will ready look like. So when you get there, you already know um, where you're going and who you're going to work with. Yeah. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. of course. Of course. Um, OK, so this month our topic, we're talking about fundraising. Um, friend raising, we're talking about it all, kind of the importance of building relationships and, and how that helps with um, fundraising. So what tips would you have for organizations that's um, looking to grow in these areas? Yeah, good question. You know, um, I would say, you know, three things in particular. Uh, number one, you know, having your books in order, your accounting books in order. Uh, that's probably the first thing uh, that's really important. The second thing is, you know, strategically targeting uh whether it's corporate donors uh and three things we're going to talk about corporate donors plan giving mm -hmm. and individuals 
So, you know, strategically targeting those three avenues of people. So um, let's start off with the first one, uh, okay. corporate giving, right? Mm -hmm. So when we think about corporate giving, we're, we're talking about going to your local, you know, business down the street, for example. Um, nothing big like a Walmart or, or, you know, something like that, um, where it's a lot of red tape to get funds. But just going to your local businesses to say, hey, this is what we're doing. This is how we're benefiting the community. We would like for you to, you know, contribute. Now, that sounds good. Uh, however, mm -hmm. when it comes to corporate giving, I want you to kind of keep something in mind. Corporations do not just give nonprofits money mm -hmm. because on the corporate side, they, they cannot write that complete amount off on their, their return, okay? So when it comes to corporate giving, it's best to say, would you like to sponsor? That word means a lot because mm -hmm. on the corporate side, being a sponsor is like advertising for them, marketing and advertisement. So they have a line item for that, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to your side, you're still receiving funds, uh, but you're kind of maybe putting their logo on a few things, right? Mm -hmm. So they're getting something in return, which is great. You're getting the funds you need, and they're also getting advertisement, which is which is mm -hmm. fantastic. So when it comes to corporate giving, just please keep that in mind that it's not as straightforward as like your individual donations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the yeah. second, I don't know if you had a question before we move on to the no, second. no, no. I love that. So, so, so with the corporations being able to tap into their. Um, their their marketing line item through saying hey we're looking for uh sponsorships mm -hmm. which is which is really cool and uh, and it's something that many corporations they had they build out their uh, marketing line items a lot of them have pretty big marketing line items um so if they put you on that kind of reoccurring you know like hey um you know they'll help us get the message out that's a good way to bring funds i love that you mentioned that yes yeah, awesome the second way is plan giving you know, a lot of times we don't talk about this, but plan giving is really, really important. So let's talk about that for a moment. So uh, plan giving is basically someone leaves funds to you um, within their will or within their life insurance policy. Um, so uh, as a bit, you know, when you when you go and apply for, let's say, life insurance, for example, they ask you, who would you who would you like to be a beneficiary? Mm -hmm. um, most people put their husband, their wife, kids, they may, they may even split it. Um, mm -hmm. But people don't realize you can actually put a nonprofit on there as a beneficiary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so how do you strategically go about doing something like that? Uh, number one, mm -hmm. running an ad campaign or things of that nature. Um, here's an easy way to kind of do that. Uh, talking to older family members. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds very crazy. But <laughs> we know the inevitable is going to happen to all of us, right? Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. because we understand that, we may it, it's not a bad thing to talk to a family member who is older to say, hey, do you do you have a life insurance spot? Yep, I do. Okay. Well, out of curiosity, would you you have to ask them how much they have, because that's kind of <laughs> intrusive. Uh, but mm -hmm. you can also just simply say, hey, you know, how would you feel about maybe one percent of that coming toward the nonprofit? that I run. Mm. That sounds, that doesn't sound like you're begging necessarily, right? Right. But it's strategically saying this, this will be nice for you to do. You can also offer something by saying, hey, if you did this, I don't know how much money that is, but if you did yeah. something like this, you could, we could, you know, maybe put something in the newsletter about you, uh, you know, anything mm -hmm. of that nature to just say your legacy is kind of going forward. Mm -hmm. um, you know that those type of conversations might be difficult to have with some people, yeah. as we know. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, uh, right, you know, yeah. A lot of people don't want to talk about when they go die. Um, right, right. Yeah, they know it's, it's they know it's going to happen, but mm -hmm. most people don't like to have that type of conversation, mm -hmm. and so we realize that. Uh, but um, that that is a sure way of hey, this is funds that that may be coming in when this happens. Mm -hmm. um, that you can kind of even put on your books as well. So yeah. just a thought. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, I like that you shared that because that's an area, especially um, for smaller and possibly mid-side organizations that might not be tapped into mm -hmm. as much, especially when you have people that's really bought into your mission um, and um, now inviting them to be able to um, let their legacy continue. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a tough conversation, but, you know, um, I know for them, too, it may be fulfilling to know that it doesn't end, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Very true. Mm -hmm. The third way, of course, is always individual giving. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we forget about that, to be honest, because we're trying to go after big corporate dollars. Uh, but we don't realize that with those corporate dollars come what's called grant agreements. Mm -hmm. It's called, yep, being yep. Legal, you know, there, there's a lot to go with that. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, you may get $100,000 from somebody, but there's a grant agreement that comes with that that's pretty extensive and there's things you need to do to kind of you know make sure you're spending the money correctly and you know mm -hmm. things like that when it comes to individual giving let's say if you start a gofundme or any other platform like that the average individual is not checking up behind you when they mm -hmm. give you when they give you a hundred dollars or even five hundred dollars um mm -hmm. they just want to give and keep it moving and so with individual giving you don't run into a lot of red tape a lot of you know scrutiny i would say when it comes mm -hmm. uh, comes to that um so i would say you know starting off with those three ways is a, mm -hmm. a is a really good way of not only getting your name out there to, to people but also it, it doesn't come with a lot of um a lot of red tape when it comes to, to mm -hmm. the giving so let me ask you, because you mentioned GoFundMe, and I know there's other ways of sending. You know, there's the um, what the PayPal's, the um, what Cash Apps, the Zelles, all these, the Venmo's, all these different ways. From an accounting standpoint, which I'm normally typically really hesitant on um, using, and I'd like to get your thoughts from an accounting standpoint um, when taking in donations. Are those like? platforms would you say those are those platforms are okay to use especially like a cash app or or would you recommend like another another uh, means for the organization yeah very good question so let's just talk about individual donation with that because that's probably what you yeah say. um mm -hmm. if somebody is let's say at an event you have and they go i would like to contribute and they go mm -hmm. can i just cash app you Mm -hmm. um i would say probably no to that um <laughs> i would not make that a habit i'll just say yeah. that um mm -hmm. most organizations have a donate now button on their website that's mm -hmm. the best way because that's a, a a secure way of funds coming in and out for, excuse me funds coming into the organization mm -hmm. so i would definitely lean more toward that route than oh you can just sell me you know, whatever you want to tell me. Right. Um, yeah, it's just a better way. And and maybe with organizations also having um, a few different streams, because I know like I've seen organizations like where they have a cash app, they got a Venmo, they got a PayPal. And I'm like, what? How do you keep up with all of that? Um, so yeah, yeah, it is a lot of different ones. So maybe kind of zooming into like, I know for us, we have like one payment, one, one, um, organization that we use and i'll say is give lively.org it's it's yep. free um to organizations and you can just go on uh, and it's, it still links to stripe and do all of that other stuff but you can go on to the um website click that donate now you know it goes to you mm -hmm. um and then they'll also keep track of the donors and and some of their information also in that basic information in the system that you could kind of transfer over um as well but yeah i i would recommend to organizations not to have too many different um platforms because you're going to get confused your staff's going to get confused as to where to send them and then they're you know your donors are not going to know what when you know which app can i use this month yeah. to um donate to you yeah i'll tell you something else regarding that why it's not good to mm -hmm. have a lot of platforms is because mm -hmm. I've seen this recently where let's say somebody is set up on a recurring donation mm -hmm. and they decide, I don't want to do that no more, mm -hmm. but you don't know what, how they contributed because you got yeah. so many platforms. 
So yep. be very yep. careful with, with that because then you run into, if you can't refund them right away, you're going to run mm -hmm. into another issue. Um, so that's really important to keep in mind. Yeah, no, that, that's a good point. Okay, so we have, you um, talked about corporate sponsorships, you talked about plan giving, you talked about um, individuals, any other tips you have in the areas of fundraising or building relationships, friend raising um, uh, for your nonprofit organization? Yeah, you know, good question. The best way is to tell your own story, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're on social media a lot. You know, hours at mm -hmm. looking at everybody else's business <laughs> except for promoting <laughs> our own, right? So uh -huh. we don't realize that when we go out to eat and we post food pictures and tag where we're at, we're giving them free advertisement. Yeah. And so yep. why not do that for yourself? Uh today, mm -hmm. I, I know you do this quite a bit. You know, today this is mm -hmm. what I did with my nonprofit. Yeah. I did this, I mm -hmm. did. So now people are seeing this and they're going, I yep. like what she does. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Let me contribute. Um yeah. you know, and uh, and don't be afraid of saying if you would like to contribute, this yep. is how you can do so. I, I don't see that often with You're some right, yeah. smaller nonprofits. I actually see where they have a I don't want to beg for money mentality. And I'm mm -hmm. like, you're not, you're not technically begging. You're supporting, you're contributing to a, a community of good. So you're not yep. like, just, yep. can I have $5? You're not doing that. You're contributing yeah. to something that needs to be contributed to, you know, within your community. So I think changing the mindset is really important. And also, like I said, your own adver advertising yourself is, is also mm -hmm. very important. And you're inviting someone to come along um with you yeah, like you know because a lot of a lot of times people may not have the um the time or whichever to be able to find an organization to connect with um but through you kind of sharing the story and now saying hey you can join me by xyz following or making a donation or whichever you're allow you're inviting someone to come on over and kind of share in the passion that you have for your mission mm -hmm. with you as yeah. well yeah very very true very true yeah good 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 um how about um anything um before we close out like today's conversation let's you know i always got to talk to you especially from my uh, accounting uh standpoint any common areas um for nonprofits that you you think that nonprofits need to just be aware of um you know as a whole uh, and that can also connect to the other areas that we're talking about. So anything in account, like any accounting tips, the one-on-one that you have for nonprofits as well. Yeah, I, I appreciate you asking that. You know, one of the things is don't think you don't, don't, don't come to the conclusion you don't need an accountant uh, mm -hmm. or a bookkeeper or whatever you want to call us. So mm -hmm. don't come to that conclusion. Um, they, even though my job is not to raise money, but my job is to assist in that because when when you start getting large sums of money or people saying i would like to give you you know three hundred thousand dollars that's a lot of money okay mm -hmm. um that could that could propel your nonprofit to a completely different level they want those people want to see financials okay mm -hmm. they, they don't care about the heart of the mission as much until they uh, when yeah. they start looking at the numbers to see how you've been spending funds uh, even though you may not have a lot of funds at the moment, but how are you managing what you do have? Uh, did you put that first versus paying yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen that yep. where people are paying themselves a lot, but they never had an accountant or, or anything mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that does not look good, to be honest. Uh, so just keep that in mind that, you know, the accounting part really is a, a significant part of, of, of business. Yeah. So um, what I hear is you got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So you <laughs> mean it, right? So even you might not, you might feel you don't need accounting um, now, but I can tell you even down the road, um, especially as you start going after those larger grants, they ask for your historical data. So they ask for that, that data when you were less than 50,000. They want to know about what was happening then too. So if you weren't maintaining your books then, it's, it's almost like you have to wait extra years to go after 
those type of funds. So that's something you definitely want to consider is um, you might feel like you're not in the place where under 50,000, we can't necessarily afford to um, invest in an accountant right now, but I'll definitely recommend that you research um, a schedule call um, with Robert and his team to kind of see what would it look like. And at what point do we press go and, and bring an accountant in because um, years to come, it's going to come back to you. So yeah. three, four years, five years down the line, you're starting to go after these larger grants. They're going to say, we would like to see the last three years um, of statements or all these other things that you probably, you may not have because you didn't have someone um, um, aiding you uh, in that area. That is so I, I tell you, that is so true. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know this. You've known me since you started, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that I keep seeing, like, on repeat, and that mm -hmm. is no historical data. Um, I, I don't know how to, yeah, I, I, I see it often. Yeah. Where, yeah. you know, there's a large family foundation that's like, oh, I love what you do. Okay, give us the last three years of your financials in their life. I don't have that. Mm -hmm. I never did accounting, period. Um, mm. You know, I mean, what, do you, what does that tell them? Um, yeah. You know, not to be mean, but that sounds irresponsible. So you got, you, had to, mm. you got to ask yourself, would you give somebody money who you knew was irresponsible? You probably would not. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have to look at it from their perspective as well. Yeah, that's a good point. And then I would say for our smaller organizations, um, and we're going to go real nonprofit, I mean, accounting 101, keep your personal and your business separate. Oh <laughs> your personal and your nonprofit yeah. separate. Um, yeah. And that's yeah, because that happens. That happens a lot. And then sometimes, and, and I'm not just talking about the reverse of us using our nonprofit accounts for personal. I'm also talking about you using your personal account for your mm -hmm. nonprofit. And Robert, tell me if I'm, I'm I'm going down the right line in the sense of like, I would recommend to an organization if I'm personally for my nonprofit giving money, cause you know, I, I get it. The early years you may be coming out of your pocket. Um, I would recommend making that donation to my nonprofit and then spending out of my nonprofit account, the expenses like associated with yeah. that thank you for saying that um <laughs> so uh, when, when it comes to the accounting we cannot technically all that money you put in when i say put in i mean like spending on your yeah. using your own like debit card or whatever you technically mm -hmm. cannot count that uh on your books right um mm -hmm. because it's not flowing from the right account so mm -hmm. yes please could the, the good thing about donating unless you if, if you're a standard deduction person Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a little different, which most of us are, right? But if you itemizing, mm -hmm. contribute to the nonprofit, please. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep, contribute yep. and yeah. spend that money. Uh, mm -hmm, whatever mm -hmm. you do, do not commingle funds. That right. That first of all, that's illegal. Let's start with that. Um, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do not want to commingle yep. funds. That's not good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Good. Yeah. So I'm glad we established that so for someone who's listening right now. I know it's so easy. You're just going, 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 but just make sure that you, you keep them separate, going both ways, personal and, you know, um, um, for your nonprofit. Yeah. I have a saying that I'm going to conclude with pretty much. Okay. <laughs> and that is, uh, you know, slow down to move faster. Somebody told me that years ago and I never forgot it. Such a simple mm -hmm. statement. Uh, but yep. quite powerful, right? So mm -hmm. instead of just, I, well, you know, I just had to do, I just, you know, I, no, slow down. It's not a rush. Yep. You know, yep. that stuff will get done. Um, but mm -hmm. definitely follow. If you follow that, you'll be all right. That's my answer. For that. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yep. That's so true. Because sometimes you move fast, you can't think about those things that have a long lasting impact. Yeah. So through slowing down, you're able to take that time and kind of really strategize like, okay, this is our next move. Like, I guess I don't play checkers, but I, I um, chess, but I assume it's like playing all of the game of chess. You're just literally trying to figure out the strategy behind, okay, this is my next move. Yeah. Which is, I love. Awesome. True. Robert, it's always awesome to have you on live. Thank you for dropping the gems continuously, <laughs> sharing the knowledge Anytime. with us. Awesome. Anytime. Thank you so much. 
You're welcome. So, all right. So that concludes today's Nonprofit Enthusiast Live. Thank you once again for um, joining us, Robert. And thank you mm -hmm. all so much for tuning in. And we'll see you at the next Nonprofit Enthusiast Live. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Uh, Thank <laughs> you.